Hey guys, today I am headed somewhere very unique, very special, to do a very interesting experiment. I am headed to the Cervico Gin in Cortland, Alabama to see about getting some gin trash. Everybody, John here from Hallmark Homestead. Listen, today I'm going to get a very controversial composting ingredient. Uh, I don't know how it's going to work out. I need you guys to comment below and tell me what you think will happen. Uh, I'm going to get some gin trash. Now, from what I hear, cotton gin trash is basically the debris left over from the, the cotton ginning process where they uh, pile it all up, kind of let it decompose and compost, and they sell it to folks, you know, as a, as a compost. But the bad thing is, is that it does contain a high probability of pigweed. Pigweed, yes. Uh, a very tough weed to eradicate. Also, a lot of the growers, or especially here in Alabama, use pesticides and herbicides and other things in their cotton growing process. Now, uh, the extension office told me that if I get them to get me some of the older stuff that's four or five years old, that uh, some of the Auburn people have said that pesticides and herbicides will have leached out and won't be a problem and won't be a bad thing, and it can be approved for organic gardening. So that's what we're going to go for. But the main thing that I'm concerned about is that pigweed. Uh, now, I'm not incorporating um, this compost into the soil. I'm not tilling it under. I'm not digging it in. I am just top dressing as a mulch layer. So my thoughts are, is that if there are any pigweed in it, that I'm putting about two inches down, it's gonna basically have the opportunity to germinate and happen, and then maybe I can get rid of it? Oh, I hope so. Oh. Got the emergency flashes on guys this little truck ain't gonna take it oh man I'm gonna go about 20 miles an hour the whole way home cuz that my <laughs> my tires are so close to the rim I'm telling you what I have overweighed my truck this is a 0.85 of a ton so way too much for my little truck but oh well you got to do what you got to do and we got to get this garden started Alrighty guys, it's a little windy, but I'm going to try to do this. Hopefully you can hear me. This is beautiful, black, fluffy, well-rotted compost. Now, I know there's the weed seed thing, and that's going to be tricky, but I got .85 of a ton for 50 bucks at the local gin. And uh, I'm just so excited. I'm going to put this stuff out on a tarp. That way I can get it sifted and get it onto the garden. Oh man, five wheelbarrow loads, and here's what's left. So $50 will do an entire 50-foot bed, plus several of my flower beds around the house, and the residues and stuff that I have left over, I'll be able to put uh, in the compost pile and save for next time. So I figure about over the course of the season, you know, what I would have spent thousands of dollars on compost, I'll only spend maybe a hundred or two. So it's pretty pretty exciting. So man yeah, I'm gonna rake this at the back of my truck. Good thing I got this handy landscape rake. So guys, I've got all this new uh gin trash compost. Plus I've got my other compost that I need to finish sifting. So I like to sift through all of it, uh, you know, to make sure everything's nice and uniform and it makes good stuff for the market garden beds. Uh, but I don't really have a sifter anymore because mine kind of broke and it was kind of crappy anyway. So time to make a new one. All right, so first thing, we're going to make a frame here with some legs to put the wheelbarrow under each time we do it. So I'm cutting uh, four of these legs 
of these two by or sorry four by fours, uh, three feet each. All right, next I'm going to take these two by fours, eight footers, and cut them in half to make uh, basically a four foot box. Man, you like petting that cat, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so with dimensional lumber, it's not quite you know two by four by eight. I mean, there's little differences, so. You can see here at the end, I've actually got a little bit more length on two of the boards, but that's totally fine. Just keep those together, and you can use those for one side and those for one side, and it shouldn't be no problem. This is a very rough build. All right, up next, eight-foot lengths of two by two. We're going to cut these to four-foot lengths as well. All right, next I'm going to pre-drill some holes to connect these two and then use uh, exterior wood screws to connect these two like this to kind of make the track that the wheels will sit on. You'll see more about what I'm talking about in a moment. And I'm going to make two of these, one for each side, for the composter to sift on. Ta-ta! Two of these little things for the wheels to slide upon. Alright, now I'm going to pre-drill and drill these together like this. And then we'll probably come back right here about a inch or so up and do a cross piece on each side at about four feet and that should be about perfect that'll be about it for the base now if you can't tell from my videos I'm not a master carpenter but I went ahead and pre-drilled these holes and then I pre-drilled the screw in to where they're almost coming through the other side so that when I hold it up to this right here I can screw it a little bit easier I know it's a little janky but hey I'm not a professional see I'm gonna do these cross members and then we'll get on to building the cart all right, here we go, guys. It's kind of big, but hey, that's why I like it. <laughs> um, now I'm going to do along the sides that it will rock, because I'm going to pull my wheelbarrow in through here. And right along here, I'm going to add support to the base with these last two pieces. So it'll be some a little bit of support, keep it from being as wobbly. And I'm going to put them about six or eight inches up, maybe. All right, so far so good. Here's the base. Ready to go here with this gin compost. So yeah, see, I'll be able to pull this. I made it super big on purpose because I want to be able to pull this in. Or a larger uh, wheelbarrow when I get my new wheelbarrow. So a bigger wheelbarrow or garden cart. And then I'll, I'll build my little sifter tray that'll fit up here. It'll be real big, but it'll be skinny. So I can sit there and precisely shake like this. Just back and forth about a foot. So, you know, so I'm just coming over to do measurements. I'm just going to basically get a measurement of the wheelbarrow long, and that's going to be the length of my uh, width of my little basket here. And then I'm going to go the inside diameter here, and that'll be where my wheels are. So, pretty exciting. So, guys, I've decided to make a little basket for inside of the shaker uh, two and a half feet wide, I guess you could say that way, and then uh, it'll be 43 and a half the, the longest way. Uh, to fit in there perfectly so that the wheels can fit on that little 2 by 2 Alrighty guys, it's kind of got dark on me, but that's what you got to do when you got a family. So I'm going to build this box here for the inside tray. But I want to make sure that this piece here, this length, is the absolute longest. So I'm putting this board to the inside so that this is the correct width to meet the box, if that makes sense. If I was to do something like this, it might throw the the measurement off by a couple inches so I'm gonna pre-drill these holes and just screw them in all right up next I've just laid my hardware cloth out and I'm just gonna line it up and start snipping and uh, actually snip kind of the corner out <laughs> so I can bend this up and staple it to each wall kinda of like you would do when you wrap in a Christmas gift kinda of like that All right, excuse the night time again. Uh, but yeah, so I've got the um, little wire bent over like that, like a Christmas gift. And then I took these little uh, poultry staples. I've had them forever, and I've used them for so many projects, little poultry net staples. I used those and uh, kind of stapled it to the side, and that's tough to staple that side. Uh, and then I'm going to take these little screws here that I bought, I'm going to put these casters on there. Let me show you that. Alrighty, guys. I've got the wheels on. It's rolling good. <laughs> now, it's too dark for me to show you guys it working out there. So, I have to wait for that for tomorrow. But so far, so good. I'm pretty excited. 
here it is in all of its wonderful glory. <laughs> Phase one of the project. I can already tell that I'm going to want to add some boards here. Some 2x6 boards that will come up a little bit. So that when I do shovel my stuff in here, it stays on top of the wheelbarrow. So that's an adjustment I will make. Um, also, I may add some, a little piece here just to cover that corner, make it look a little nicer. Plus, it'll keep it from bump, bumping. Uh, but I don't know. I'm just going to kind of use it for a few days and kind of see what changes need to be made and what I need to do to fix it. So this will be an ongoing project. So, But I will tell you this, it is much better than the one I had before, which was just two by fours with some old chicken wire nailed to it. The hardware cloth half inch gives you a much stronger area and gives you a much better um, sift and, and it's much, 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 much stronger. So I'm gonna try to do this one handed here. Just as an example. There we go. Here's a one-handed example for you. Standing straight up and down with no strain on my back at all. <laughs> Look how fast and awesome that is. And then I'm able to, to be done that quick and that easy. And it gives you a nice compost product. Yeah, if you liked the video, hit like. If you got any ideas or suggestions you think I should try, Comment below because I want to keep making this thing better and better as we go. So first, uh, the compost sifter. It's not a perfect design. I need a catchment right here for the debris. I need an under catchment to catch anything that falls like that. And I need little sideboards in there to kind of help hold the compost above the uh, wheelbarrow also i thought about making like a funnel system kind of like a shoot system so i can put more compost in at once and sift for longer and stuff like that but overall this compared to when i did the first bed there with my homemade compost this made my back feel 100 percent better and made the job 100 percent faster probably 200 percent faster um, and it was just a great overall thing i love the convenience i just absolutely love it there will be some improvements so stay tuned for that Moving along to the next thing here is the difference in compost quality. You can see the wood chip type compost that I make with my food scraps uh, where I don't monitor temperature, I don't monitor moisture, I don't turn it very often, very slow process. Although I'm sure it's fine, it just pales in comparison to this. Uh, this is way better. This is not as good. <laughs> Look at the color difference. Look at the textural difference. Look at how it covers, how smooth it is. Wow, super great. I'm excited on this next bed that we do on another video another day um, to try a different type of compost. Maybe a store-bought compost, maybe a bulk compost, maybe something totally different. Who knows? But we're going to keep experimenting and we're going to keep learning. So all in all, pretty cool thing. Uh, the last thing I would say that made life better today was this wonderful, beautiful rake right here. Man, what a great purchase. I know I had some videos come out featuring it, but guys, this is wonderful. It made the job super easy. I was able to do the entire row in one pass. And then if I needed to go back down, I could go back and down a few times. But it made the job so much easier and so much better. Such a high-quality tool at such a cheap price.